Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're discussing issues that I personally wrestle with with regard to the faith. And today, we'll be addressing the question, is there any good reason to think Christians should always be sweet? While I've dealt with this question before, back in episode 71, episode directory in the video description, I wanted to raise it one more time, because it was probably the first problem that I ever wrestled with, and the one that first motivated me to become an agnostic back when I was younger. Many of those in the church would have us believe that Jesus came down to earth only to tell us to be nice, polite doormats, and to never rock any boats or cause anyone to become upset. This is a position that enjoys precisely no support from scripture or church tradition prior to the last 60-ish years. In fact, it flies in the face of everything the saints, councils, and fathers of the church, not to mention Jesus himself, have ever taught us. Of course, showing that there is no real support for a position is harder than showing that a position is supported, so let's address this issue by sampling the history of the Catholic Church and asking just a few questions of those who place their faith in being nice and sweet. If God meant for our faith to just amount to being sweet, why in Numbers 16 did he cause the earth itself to swallow up Korah and his followers just for trying to become priests of God like Aaron? Causing the earth to swallow people up isn't very sweet, is it? Why did God, in the two books of Kings, continually tell the kings of Israel that they were doing evil in the sight of the Lord and needed to knock it off? Why did he say this same thing through pretty much all the prophets, throughout all the history of Israel, until they were deported to Babylon? For that matter, why would he allow Babylon to take them away from the promised land? Not very sweet, was it? When Jesus came, he told people that if they didn't repent of their sins, they'd all perish, Luke 13, 3. He referred to the religious leaders of the time as a brood of vipers, calling them all sorts of names and comparing them to whitewashed tombs, calling them out for hypocrisy of all kinds, almost all of Matthew chapter 23. And when he saw people buying and selling things in the temple, he drove them out with a whip that he'd made with his own two hands, John 2.15. Gosh, that doesn't sound sweet at all. When St. Paul, after the death and resurrection of Jesus, was brought before the Jewish authorities, he basically tricked them into fighting with each other, Acts 23, 6-10. And ever since then, the church has had a long history with people who determined that it wasn't wise for them to act sweet all the time. When St. Boniface decided to chop down the old oak tree of Geismar, which the inhabitants called the Thunder Oak, and used to worship Thor with bloody human sacrifice, well, that wasn't a very sweet thing to do, and a whole village was converted when he did it. When the church councils decreed that those who commit heresy should be anathema, well, that's not very sweet either, but it kept the church together. When the saints of the church and the early Jesuits attacked the positions of Martin Luther and John Calvin, well, that wasn't too friendly, not very sweet at all, really. And when Pope St. Pius X said that modernism was the synthesis of all heresies, well, that's not too sweet either. So my question is, is there some bizarre way to harmonize the Catholic faith with a broad, sweeping command to be universally sweet? Or are the modern churchmen who advance sweet idolatry within the church just wrong? I'll give you a hint. They're wrong. Now, as I said back in episode 71, being nice to people can have a place in the faith life, because anything that can be useful in opening people up to the word of God does have a place like that, and sometimes you can convert more people by being friendly. But the ultimate aim of being nice is to avoid offending people, and in an overly sensitive world like ours, people often take offense at anything they don't already agree with. You won't win converts if the only people you preach the gospel to are people who already agree with the gospel. But why would you want to care about winning converts? And Jesus, coming, spoke to them, saying, All power is given to me in heaven and in earth. Going therefore, teach ye all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you all days, even to the consummation of the world. Matthew 28, 18-20 Oh, yeah. Next, what happens to temptations in heaven? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.